Hello and welcome back to ICE 365 Live. Now we're talking the state of slots in 2023 and I'm joined in the studio by jo Joel Keeble, the co-founder of eGaming Monitor. How are you, Joel? I'm very well, thank you, yeah. The day one? Day one. How are you feeling? Good, very good, yeah. Looking forward to getting around. I, uh, I missed the conference last year, unfortunately, so it's nice, nice to be back here and with all the hustle and bustle of everything going on. And last year we had uh, co-founder Kevin Dale in with us and he was outlining just how many slots are coming into market each month. Have you seen uh, progress from that in the last 12 months? Yeah, so it's a good question and um, interestingly uh, we've seen a big increase in the last 12 months. We're now at uh, 28,000 slot titles that we track, which is a 30% increase on the prior year. Um, but not only that, we've seen a huge increase in the number of studios as well creating those games. So that's increased by about 100 from around 520 to 621 in 2022. Um, so what does this all mean for the industry? Well, it presents a, a similar problem to, to that faced by the Amazons and the Netflix of this world, that there's, there's huge amounts of content and how do you get, get the right content to the right player in a way that makes your site engaging and sticky um, and you know they're some of the questions that our, that our service looks to answer. Nice and, and talk us through how eGaming Monitor keeps track of the market that never stays still. So yeah I mean there's a lot going on first of all we have uh, very powerful hardware we have a number of uh, 32 core plus servers hundreds of gigabytes of memory uh, terabytes and terabytes of disk space. We have uh, um, cloud computing where we outsource some of our processing requirements um, and we also use that for collaborating internally and externally as well. Um, to give you an idea of that, we tracked 56 million data points in, in uh, 2022 or, or slots and for each one of those slots we have to we have to marry that slot up with the correct studio um, and that can be challenging because you might have two different studios with two different games but they have the same name so we have clever um, AI and, and technology that, that helps us do that um, and then uh, perhaps the more dull part of, uh, of what we do is lots and lots of manual cleaning we have to make sure that the data is, uh, is accurate and, and spot on um, so we have some people in the, the UK, we have Romania, Philippines, India, uh, people on the ground uh, who help technically but they also you know, help with the, the cleaning and you know, to give you an idea of that we see a, a churn rate of about two to three hundred casinos per year that's closing their doors and reopening and, and then perhaps a similar number again, so maybe five or six hundred in total, similar number again that are upgrading their sites. So yeah, five to six hundred in total that we're, um, um, uh, we have to visit and we have to keep track of, we have to find them in the media and we have to, uh, we have to input them into our database. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on, lots of uh, technology and lots of manual work as well. So you mentioned the database there, can you tell us a bit about how you build out your database? Um, I mean, yeah, it's, a, it's the technology builds into it and it's the manual, it's the manual, uh, you know, going out to regulators, looking up casinos, um, lots of manual legwork. Um, but you know, the, the main source of millions and millions of data points comes from us visiting these websites using our technology and downloading data and then packaging that all together. and you know, that feeds into the database. I mean, we also track suppliers, so we monitor the news and we, we look at the industry suppliers and we look at deals that are happening between them. So again, that's a, the slightly more dull part of what we do, but we have people reading the news every day and, and collating and gathering all this information and, and feeding it into those databases. And you've deployed artificial intelligence for the games recommendation and collections engine, otherwise known as Grace. Talk us through how this helps guide players to games that appeal to them and how that benefits operators. Yeah, so there's another slide for, uh, for viewers at home. 
Um, you know, and that was, this was our answer to, one of our answers to the Netflix and Amazon content problem of how do you get, you know, there's so much content, how do you get that content to the, to the, um, to the right person in a way that makes your site sticky and engaging? So we, um, we created the games recommendation and collections engine initially as a way just to, to show operators the power of our data and what you can do with filtering and, and that kind of thing. And then we, we got good feedback from that. So we added um, artificial intelligence to that where you could take or we take the last three games that a player has played and using artificial intelligence and access to our databases, we we're able to suggest the games that are likely to be most sticky for that player. So that might be the players about to leave your casino um, and the, you might have a pop-up that says, uh, uh, before you go, have you played this game? Or you might have a for you section on the website and in there's 10, 20 games, but they're all relevant and sticky content that you know is, that's personalized for that individual. And I suppose the good thing about our product is that we have, uh, you know, we have the data, we have the off-the-shelf games recommendation engine, and you can get access to that, or you can get access to any combination of that. You may be an operator that that already uh, has your own in-house games recommendation engine, so you'd just be interested in the data, or you know, you might want help with everything. So there's uh, lots to pick and choose from. And um, talk us through, so with game developers, how can you help better guide the types of slots they design? Uh, essentially, are there just too many similar games already out there? Um, so no, I wouldn't say there's uh, too many similar games. Um, operators will retire games when they're no longer profitable. But then also, if you think about a, a population of six billion adults and all the cultural backgrounds and all the the interests and the uh, hobbies and the similarities between them and the, the differences also. I think there's, there's room for, for more content out there. Um, how do we uh, help players uh, design that content? Well, you know, they can log on to our, uh, onto our platform. You can see some of the, the charts and graphs, I think, when it, when it cuts to it. Um, but, you know, you might uh, look up um, you know, you can see game position by location, uh, by color, by theme, by reels, lines, rows, RTP, that kind of thing. And you might be interested in, say, the Mexican market. So you might look up the Mexican market and see that the um, green animal and nature games with high volatility and high RTP are, are very popular. Um, and you might think, oh, perhaps there's something there that I can learn that can feed into my game. Or you might go against that and you know look for a gap in the market and you know go down that route. Another way is you could look at what the leading operators are doing in the industry and you know see if there's something you can learn from the success of their games. And, and again, um, you know look at what the poorly performing suppliers and the poorly performing games are doing and, and see if there's any pitfalls that you can that you can avoid. Um, you know the reality is that there's so much data and there's so many different possibilities, um, so many different ways you can dissect that data that we're learning all the time from our clients about new and innovative ways that they're doing that. And um, you've recently expanded your offering to launch Bingo and affiliate products. How has the development for these differed from your core slot product? Yeah, so, um, you know, first of all, they, they were built on our core code base, our powerful tens and tens of thousands of lines of of code that has allowed us to fast track and streamline these these uh, projects and um, you know then we added capabilities on top of that for things like real-time monitoring so we could could visit sites on an hourly basis and we could record things like uh, a number of games a number of players um, uh, financials so we could look at um, you know uh, turnover of bingo rooms hourly, daily, monthly, you know, by operator, by studio, um, all this kind of thing. And then, then we, we upgraded our front end also to uh, um, allow better access again when the slides come up, um, to allow more real time access to, to that data and that functionality. And also we upgraded our, our API to, 
to allow uh, clients to programmatically link into our data and be able to get the financial information and and you know the the important data that's needed on a daily basis they can you know access that very quickly thank you joel and um so it's day one of ice what are you excited to see um i'm you know i'm glad to be back because i missed last year and i'm looking forward to to walking around and uh um, visiting all the booths and visiting some familiar faces that I've not seen for a little while. I've got some meetings and, and uh, uh, appointments scheduled. Um, I've got, got some plasters on standby. I think I'm going to be doing a lot of walking around for... <laughs> for uh, not wearing 50, new shoes, 50, are you? They, they're, they're not completely new, okay. but they're, they're not fully worn in yet either. So. <laughs> Have you seen anything on the schedule that you weren't expecting to see? Um, I mean, I've been to a lot of these shows, so, so I don't think so, really. I mean, more it, it's just a case of it being back to how it used to be a, a couple of years back. Um, nothing that surprised me yet, but then it's, it's early days. I might, be, I might be surprised as I walk around. Brilliant. Thank you for your time, Joel. Good luck with walking around the <laughs> show floor. Thank you. So that's all from us this morning. A huge thank you to our first guests from Inside Asian Gaming, H2 Gambling Capital, eGaming Monitor, Kai Brock, Waterhouse VC, and of course, to the IGB News team. We're taking a short break and we'll be back later today when the focus shifts to the growing US market. We've got a number of next-gen betting businesses talking through how consumer expectations are changing sports books, not to mention some more leading operators, the latest on North American regulation and a sneak preview on a brand new event coming later this year. Everyone is also keen to find out what you think of Ice365 Live Studio and you can contact us on Twitter at Ice365Global or using the hashtag Ice365Live to get in touch and tell us what you think. We'll see you at 20 past one live from the show floor and on Ice365.com. We'll see you there.